So I hope it's clear by now that AI is a giant computational problem. As we've succeeded in building faster computers, those improvements in computer speed have led to breakthroughs in AI. The last lesson I want to share with you is about natural language understanding. We learned that although computers have gotten a lot faster over the last 10, 50 years, they're still not fast enough to really do well at natural language understanding. So let's look into that in a little bit more detail. And I want to start with a story. So when we started working on uh, a project at uh, Baidu a few years ago, uh, it was called Deep Speech. Kind of the goal of this project was um, to see if we could apply uh, the same uh, kind of main ideas that had gone into uh, and had been really successful in computer vision um, in, in things like ImageNet and AlexNet uh, to speech recognition. Um, so by you know putting together a big complicated neural network uh, together with a lot of data and a computer that was fast enough to run all of that, um, would that lead to a more accurate speech recognition system? Um, one of the first things that we did actually uh, before diving into this is that we talked to people who had tried this before. So we found a bunch of people who had tried running um, speech recognition uh, problems uh, using deep neural networks um, on the computers that were available about 20 years ago. Um, so this was, you know, rewind back to about 1990. Um, we found a bunch of examples of people who would come and tell us and, and uh, about how they tried this. Um, they actually had a bunch of really interesting experiments. Um, I remember really clearly uh, one of the experiments uh, clearly showed that the idea was working. So it clearly showed that um, you know you get a baseline system, you train it on a you know certain amount of data, um, you increase the amount of data, you, you use a bigger neural network, and you know you clearly see an improvement in accuracy. And you could kind of extrapolate forward and say, well, um, you know if only we added a lot more data, and if only we used a much bigger neural network. Um, this would actually get really interesting and we could build a really accurate speech recognition system. Um, the problem was was that, uh, you know, the computers that were available, you know, in, in 1990 weren't very fast. Um, they weren't as fast as a giant GPU cluster that you can build today. Um, not even close. Um, so they, they had a, you know, one of uh, the people I remember had mentioned, um, you know, they let one of these experiments run on a, a DEC Alpha machine um, for about three months. Um, you know, and it, it barely made it through, you know, like a, like a small percent of the data. Um, and, you know, the, the figure that they had was kind of cut off when they, they just, you know, ran out of patience and, um, you know, just uh, uh, felt like it was just too big of a computational problem for those days. Um, so, uh, you know, fast forward 20 years later, um, computers are maybe a thousand times, maybe more faster. Um, that problem is, you know, very straightforward to solve today. Uh, and the deep speech project in Baidu, um, you know, worked really well. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things that's, that's particularly interesting um, that we don't actually have a great grasp on right now is what are the computational requirements of different open problems in artificial intelligence? Um, so the last thing uh, that I want to talk about is how we looked into, um, you know, a variety of different problems in um, Baidu. And, one of the uh, really interesting trends stood out was that um, you know some problems are, are definitely easier than others. Um, some problems are bigger computational problems than others. Um, so let me uh, switch over and let me look at this. Uh, let's let's try and uh, visualize this. So um, the first figure I want to show you is uh, you know I'm trying to compare uh, three different applications. So I'm looking at speech recognition, uh, machine translation. Uh, computer vision, think of it kind of like ImageNet, uh, NLP, um, here's uh, what I'm calling uh, natural language processing, natural language understanding. Um, in particular, this is a language modeling benchmark. So think of something like BERT or, or like GPT. Um, so uh, we're kind of, this graph is kind of showing um, over uh, uh, about an order of magnitude um, difference in uh, the speed of a computer um, against the accuracy uh, of that system. Um, you're kind of trying to see that, um, you know, if you have a bigger computer uh, at your disposal, you can train a bigger model, um, you know, in, in, a, in a fixed time budget. I think here we're, we're modeling about uh, about one month of training time. Um, and so you can see here, uh, you know, ideas like deep speech, um, even ideas like, you know, AlexNet uh, for, for ImageNet, 
um, they were, you know, working at a reasonable level of accuracy. You know, if you used a deep neural network to try and solve these problems, you know, on a computer that was, you know, maybe available in 1990, you could, you know, actually get it to work and it would deliver some amount of accuracy. Uh, it just wouldn't be very impressive. Um, so if we're looking at, you know, a vision, it just starts to take off. Uh, speech recognition, you know, somewhat flat around, you know, may, maybe about like a 30, 40% error rate is actually pretty bad uh, for a speech recognition system at the time. Uh, machine translation, not too bad. And then language modeling, just not even interesting at all. Uh, just totally, totally random. Um, but things actually change if you, if you uh, make the computer a lot faster. So um, fast forwarding uh, to about 2020, thinking about, you know, the type of computer that we have now, um, uh, also, just, just for reference, the x-axis here is looking at the size of the model. So uh, it's really just looking at uh, kind of the computational work that would be required to train a model of that size on a data set that's big enough uh, to kind of fully uh, take advantage of that model. Um, so you can think about, you know, this one is getting up, we're kind of approaching models with about 100 million parameters, maybe getting into the, uh, starting to get into billions of parameters. Um, so you can see in, in this view, you know, looking at it from 2020, computers that work pretty well in 2020, um, vision and speech are working pretty well. Uh, translation is not too bad. Uh, it's, it's picking up steam. Um, NLP is still straggling. Uh, so, you know, I, I think there's, uh, while, while some results like BERT and GPT are, are kind of can generate text that's, you know, to some level, you know, un, uncanny and, and in some cases actually pretty good, um, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Um, so especially, um, uh, NLP problems uh, just seem like they're more computationally intensive. Um, and so this actually lets us, this, this kind of simple framework uh, lets us think about, well, what would the future be like um, if only computers were much faster? Like if only we found ways of building computers that were thousands or tens of thousands of times faster than the computers that we have you know, today around uh, the year 2020. Um, so the last slide is a projection of, you know, what if uh, computers were about 10,000 times faster and we could train models, you know, that, that were maybe like 100 or 1,000 times bigger uh, than the models that we can train today, um, you know, on a, on a commensurate amount of data. Um, and I think uh, one interesting high-level takeaway is that NLP would get a lot better. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the uh, scaling with data, uh, accuracy scaling with data that we get um, and, and with model sizes, um, is pretty predictable for most of these problems. So you can kind of just extend forward and try and say, all right, well, how um, you know, big would the neural network be? How much data would it have to train on in order to um, you know, get, uh, kind of close the gap between the, the current performance and uh, kind of as we can measure the performance of, of humans on similar tasks. Um, and you can see NLP would get a huge boost. Um, maybe it wouldn't uh, quite be you know, perfect. Maybe we need some better algorithms to, to make it you know, uh, really competitive with people, but it would get a really huge boost. Um, so uh, one of the big takeaways that, um, you know, we, we had from this line of work was that, you know, uh, even in machine learning, um, you know, some problems are clearly easier than others. Um, you know, there is a threshold maybe around uh, 2010 where it became possible to build um, pretty uh, accurate speech and pretty accurate uh, vision recognition models. Um, translation is, you know, I've, I've heard some comparisons that current translation systems are about as good as a high schooler um, who's, who's studied a foreign language, but, um, you know, not really as good as, a, as an expert translator yet. Um, there's still room for improvement there. And general NLP, like, uh, general NLP is actually really nice because it's such a, it's such a general problem. Like, you can use it for uh, so many different things. Uh, like, you can use it for question answering, you could use it for summarization, you could use it for a lot of these sub-problems, like you could use it for translation. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think the, the main takeaway here is, you know, some problems are easier than others uh, from a computational perspective. Um, NLP, especially language modeling, seems like it's a very computationally intensive problem. Um, if we find ways of building computers that are much faster than the computers that we have today, like maybe, you know, a thousand times faster, 10,000 times faster, it'll provide a clear benefit uh, for problems like uh, natural language processing, like language modeling.